Check. Hey. Check. How's it going, everybody? We're going to get started in the next four or five minutes. So if you guys want to grab your seats, feel free to sit as close to the front as you want. Thank you guys for coming.
Hello? 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 Well, the mics last time, the mics last time were at different volumes. Hello? Hello? All right. Welcome, everyone. If everyone, could, if everyone could start taking their seats, we're, we're going to get started here in about 10 seconds. All right. Sweet. First off, we just want to thank all of you guys for coming here today. We're super happy and we're super blessed as our leadership team here at Idea Club to have you guys. So if you guys all want to give a round of applause just for being here. And I'd also like to give it up for our Discover students who are here. Everyone, let's give it up. Sweet. And my name is Andrew Busman, short for Andrew Alejandro Mercado Mendoza Busman. Yes, that is my full name, um, but I will be helping out for today. Amazing. And my name is Sarah LeDrew. Um, I am Vice President of Member Experience and Events here at Idea Club. Solid. And as, like I said, my name is Andrew Busman. I'm the Vice President of Content Creation in marketplaces here at Idea Club. If you guys don't know what Idea Club is, Idea Club is an entrepreneurship club here on campus where we help students turn their ideas into reality, into cash. And one of our biggest ways that we give cash opportunities to our student businesses is through our marketplaces. Amazing, and everyone, welcome to the Canyon Challenge. We're so excited you guys are here. Woo! So if you guys are not familiar with what the Canyon Challenge is, the, Can the Canyon Challenge is our very own GCU version of Shark Tank. So five of our amazing student businesses are going to get to come up here and pitch for you guys and for our amazing esteemed judges. Everyone, let's give it up for our judges. They're going to get the opportunity to come up here and pitch their businesses for the opportunity to win cash prizes. First place is going to get $2,500. Second place is going to get $1,500. Third place is going to get $1,000. And then you, the audience, gets to choose where the last $1,000 uh, cash prize goes. It's called the People's Choice Award. Uh, that's going to be the QR code on your guys' pamphlets. Uh, but we're so excited to have you here today. Um, everyone, uh, we're just so blessed to have this opportunity. And I'd like to start tonight off with a word of prayer. So if you guys could all bow your heads uh, with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful for you, Lord God, that you've brought us here tonight. Uh, we're so blessed by this opportunity, Jesus, that we get to honor you through everything, Lord God, through our education, through our businesses, Lord God, through everything that we've done this school year, Lord God, let you be the center of it. Jesus, we ask that tonight you would be glorified through our student businesses. I pray that you would calm any nerves that anyone has, Jesus. We pray, Lord God, uh, that you would be in the forefront of our minds, Jesus. We just want to have a posture of thankfulness to you, Lord God, for this opportunity for this school year. And we pray that you would help us uh, to enjoy tonight, Lord God, and to enjoy the rest of this school year. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Awesome. And I would love to introduce to the stage Tim Kelly. Thank you, Andrew and Sarah. It is my honor to be here. Um, we've been doing this now for over a decade. We've awarded tens of thousands of dollars to companies that have gone on to become amazing enterprises. Millionaires have been made. And I am thankful to the administration of Grand Canyon University, Allison Mason, uh, Randy Gibb, John Cadis, that have allowed for this to happen and give me the privilege of working for all of you to inspire, I hope, to guide to some extent, but to help you build amazing companies with your passion, with your ambition to truly make the world a better place. That's 
what entrepreneurship is all about. We solve problems. So we are blessed today as well to have the support of three of our judges that are entrepreneurs in their own right. They're housed in our ecosystem, in our co-working space called Canyon Ventures. That's run by Robert Vera. Raise your hand there, Robert. Yeah. So because we believe that the only way to really learn business is to actually do business, we say, all right, come on campus and start your own company from day one. And that's what Idea Club is all about making happen. You form teams with your peers, you get guidance from professors, and hopefully then what you hear in classes actually makes sense because you're living it. You're actually dealing with customers on a daily basis. Canyon Ventures is about Okay, so maybe not your own company, but you want to go work for another company. So we have invited dozens of companies from across the country to, we give them free rent in this big building right over here next to our GCU hotel, and we say you have to hire GCU students. So you get to work for a startup, which is a truly unique experience, right? And we also have housed in Canyon Ventures, a funding organization. So we started about, oh, <clears throat> a decade ago, a separate nonprofit that invests in startups. It's called Canyon Angels. We, we fund companies from across the country. We've invested over $7 million in more than 71 companies. So there is a path from your idea all the way to scaling and funding right here at GCU. We believe that ecosystem is unique, and this is the best place in the country to do entrepreneurship. So thank you. Yeah. I'd like to take a brief chance to have our entrepreneurs, in, or our entrepreneurs and judges just quickly do a plug for their companies because you always got to be selling. Wes, could we start with you? Oh, check, check. Can you hear me? Yeah, we All got right. you. My name is Weston Smith. Uh, sorry, I will stand up. I'm the CEO and founder of Lux Precision Manufacturing. Uh, fun fact, I actually pitched the Canyon Challenge for uh, my previous company, Lux Longboards, uh, probably about seven, eight, nine years ago. Yeah, but uh, long story short, at Lux Precision, uh, we make parts for the aerospace, defense, and medical industry. Um, on the flip, flip side, uh, we're blessed to partner with Grand Canyon University on their CNC machinist certificate program. So we help develop the next generation of uh, workforce professionals. All right, thank you, Wes. Yeah. <clears throat> Nick Hool. What's up, guys? I'm Nick Houle. I'm the founder of Hoolist Performance Technologies. We make vagus nerve stimulators to accelerate stress and anxiety relief. I think some of these people could use our, that exactly. I was just curious if anyone has like heard of the vagus nerve, <laughs> trying to see. I, I got a couple of smiles. So. There we go. Um, yeah, it's a little device. Uh, we've got a bunch of them. We're over at the Canyon Venture Space. So if anyone wants to come by, try it out, see what the hype is all about. Come on by any time. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> Ashley. Check. My name is Ashley Sankar. I'm the founder of 1920, and I founded the world's first convertible jacket that turns into a tote bag, pillow, and a blanket. And our plan is to basically take all the clothing that you wear and turn it into something that you actually really need other than clothing. So, thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> One final thing before I pass it over, I want to thank the leadership team of Idea Club, the energy that has been invested into this organization because of the efforts of Connor, of Jack, of Andrew, Olivia, Caleb, the whole gang. It is absolutely astounding what they have been able to do in mentoring their peers, inspiring everyone. I am blessed to work with such a great team. And with that, let's give Connor a big hand. The ball is on his court. Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Doing good? Awesome. So, so Tim today highlighted what a special team that we have. We, at the beginning of the year, had some bumps in the road. I'll tell you guys a story about what happened before our first ever meeting that we even had as a team. So I came here as welcome week and walked in, and I, and I got sick. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was some food poisoning, so I sat in my room for a while. And I've been working with this wonderful team. I knew what the, these individuals, guys and girls, could do this year. 
So I, we were working, I was stressed out, and that made my sickness even worse. And I thought, I, I had a concert ticket that night, so I was like, oh, I'm not going to go in. But what did I know? Part of my body was dying. And I came in, rushed to the hospital last second, and they told me I was five hours away from dying if I didn't come in. And I, I, this, I don't mean to go so low, but I'm telling a quick story here. They handed me a piece of paper, and they said, this is your paper will. And then instead of writing that down, I sat back and I prayed. And then I sent emails out to make sure we had chairs and our, all of our team was notified about what to do for the club orientation that was in three days. I, it's so wild to say it, but these individuals, I knew what they were going to do and the lives they were going to touch this year. And I knew that the Lord was going to push me through to see what they are doing. May, they may give me some credit today, but genuinely, it's this wonderful team that's worked so hard that allowed me to persevere from almost dying to work all year, every single day, every Wednesday, mentoring so many students. Speaking of that, I think we have, oh, Actually, no, let me pause that. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to show a different one. It's in a different order. My bad, y'all. But let's have the Idea Club Leadership team stand up. I want to thank them because they've helped so many students. Great job, y'all. This team, we set out, and I told them, for free, they're going to have to show up every Wednesday, mentor students, when all of them have successful business is already, or at least desires to be successful in their own business entrepreneurial world. So they have bought in. They knew what Idea Club's done for them. And thankfully, they walked in to the CCOB lobby and helped thousands of students throughout the year, both develop their business and then turn any ideas they have into actual businesses. We then built out, lobbied for a marketplace on campus. Here's our first semester recap of what our marketplace looks like. Hello everybody, my name is Connor Vickery. This is Idea Club Student Marketplace. We're so thankful to have you guys here today. We have representation from every single college on campus and we brought over $150,000 to students' pockets. This is an example of another opportunity students have through Idea Club where they can turn their ideas into actual businesses and now to sell to over 8,000 students that visit every single student marketplace that we have. Here's what we got. Welcome to Idea Club. from the booth over there or uh, digital reality sure, guys. Sure, sure, sure. thank you guys for watching please go follow digital reality on instagram as well as idea gcu and we'll see you march 7th in the ccob courtyard for our next marketplace Okay. This year alone, that was the first semester recap. We've put, proudly put, over $320,000 into students' pockets. Give a round of applause for that. Come on now. Man. This is 200 vendors that have been working and have been to an Idea Club marketplace where we've put, for every single one of them, cash in their pocket that wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for this wonderful leadership team and Idea Club as a whole. We're so thankful and proud of these individuals and all of our vendors that are probably here today that have their name now on that board. We're so thankful for all the GCU leaders for allowing us to do this because this is the first ever fully student-ran, no funding marketplace, and we blew out every expectation grading the biggest marketplaces in GCU history and also the highest grossing in GCU history. All right through here at Idea Club, where we mentor them post-marketplace and into the marketplace stage. Awesome. So today, we are going to now be announcing some of our contestants, because who's here to see some pitches? Yeah. Awesome. Sean, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'll be pitching Academics, a bulk paper grading system for teachers. Hey guys, I'm Grace, and I have QPS, which is the solution to a lack of privacy during medical emergencies. 
Hi guys, my name is Lucas. I own PowderPal, and I'm pitching a protein scoop that prevents the protein fumble. Hi, I'm Rachel. And I'm Michael. And we're presenting TrueVine, an alternative social media platform for Christian community. Hi, I'm Mackenzie, and I'm presenting on behalf of Signature Tote Co., which is bringing you a free, reusable grocery bag that utilizes NFC technology. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love the energy in the crowd. Keep that up throughout the performance. We're now going to be bringing on the first contestant, Sham from Acadex. Gorgeous. Sixty hours. That's the average time it takes per week for an educator to grade papers. Not homework, just papers. Educators want to make a difference in their students' lives. That's why they became educators in the first place. <laughs> educators don't want to go through the burden of administration. They truly are passionate about education. It is more about education and less about administration. And that is why we have built Acadex. Acadex is a platform specifically built for educators that grades papers in bulk. Well, we designed Acadex around the instructor. Teachers always have the final say in what goes on in our platform. And being a web-based tool, you can work on the desktop or on your phone. It always works. Teachers are not rocket scientists. They want something that is simple. And we deliver with Acadex. We've also integrated AI into this, which all culminates into Sydney, your own virtual assistant. Sydney's not only capable of giving you grades, but is also capable of giving you feedback on your students' papers as well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited to show you Acadex for the first time ever. Here we are. This is the stylized feedback that Sydney takes into account when you first log into Acadex. We're going, to grade we're going to upload 20 papers, and we're going to grade them all in real time, right before your very eyes. First thing we need to do is grab all 20 papers. Keep in mind that timer down there shows you how long Acadex will take to grade all those 20 papers. All right, so Acadex has grabbed all 20 papers. We're going to quickly check to see that, yep, they're all in our dashboard. Perfect. That's right where we want it. All right, we're going to grade it all. We're going to click OK. And? That's it. 20 papers graded right before your very eyes. This is remarkable. <laughs> Not only that, but Sydney has given you a grade as well as your own feedback that is taken into account from Sydney, as well as the student's paper. This is absolutely remarkable. Powerful, efficient, easier than sending an email. Acadex just changed the way teachers great. Acadex is safe and secure. We do not own any of the input or the output. And with the stylized feedback that Sydney takes into account, Acadex is unique to every educator. It's also incredibly fast. You just saw it grade 20 papers in real time. And with training Sydney, the grades you receive are <laughs> scary accurate. <laughs> Acadex is built around the educator, making grading a cakewalk. Teachers and professors have the opportunity to provide constructive feedback from Sydney in order to improve their students' education. It's also a scalable platform, meaning that we can fit the needs of both educational institutions and single users. We do have competitors. Smoden is one of them. And one of the major problems with Smoden was that it has never loaded for us. And that's what makes Acadex superior. Acadex is re reliable, robust, flexible, and will always work for you. Now, their pricing is a little bit weird, I'll be honest. Uh, at free, their free trial at three credits per week and at 20 credits to grade a paper, it'll take you seven weeks to grade one paper. We're a business to teacher company, 
Meaning we don't want educators to go through the burden of administration to get Acadex. We want Acadex to go straight to them. We want to make it easy for any educator to use our platform. And with a pricing tier that works for the needs of any educator, we've solved it. With $10, you get 100 papers you can upload every month and 250 evaluations. And at 20, you get unlimited papers, unlimited evaluations every month. We're in the business to be different. Not first, different. This is AI implemented properly. We want every educator to excel. Your vote for Acadex empowers every teacher to make a difference in their students' lives. Ladies and gentlemen, Acadex. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and kick it off. I'm not sure if I missed it, but does it only grade English papers? Not only English papers, math papers, science papers, any papers with anything, it will grade it. And what does the teacher have to do in order to empower this? Perfect. So uh, all they have to do is just sign on to our platform, upload 20 papers or how many papers that they need to upload, simply click evaluate it all, and that, that's it. It's all ready to go. It's cool. Last question for me. So usually AI is only as good as what you feed it. Mm -hmm. Does this not require teachers to upload a rubric? No, so that's a great question. Um, let me see here. Uh, where are you? Okay, well, I had a slide here, but it basically just said that we trained our model uh, solely based on our papers. We do not train any of the models based on the teacher's papers. Uh, meaning that whatever we're putting in from our papers is already accurate to a degree what teachers need it to have, so. Um, where are you at in the development of the platform? Was that demo you gave us, was that like a real demo or is that a concept? It's done. It's done. <laughs> Can, <laughs> <laughs> And can you speak a little bit to the real world testing that you've done thus far and feedback? Absolutely. So uh, we have a few professors here on campus that uh, were willing to put in their papers and try it out. And it took some time, but we eventually figured out that uh, we trained the model based on what their papers were, what the rubric they had, as, as well as uh, the grade they were giving to their students. And from what we were able to decipher, it's a 2.5 to 5% to margin of error of accuracy. So it's accurate to what an educator needs it to be. So uh, it's already done, Ch testing is already done. We've already, we're in talks actually with GCU, um, right here. We're in talks with GCU currently uh, to get Acadex implemented at school-wide, so yeah. That's awesome. Great pitch. So a couple of questions. The first one, uh, my background, I'm an engineer and I write like an engineer, which means that my handwriting is really bad. <laughs> so how does your AI model pick up on student papers if it's handwritten? That's a great question. So um, first of all, we only use PDFs currently and we're uh, implementing DocX uh, for that. So that's number one. Uh, number two is that uh, when you scan a paper, uh, you tend to miss some words uh, here and there. And so uh, we kindly encourage teachers to make sure that your students' work is accurate to what they want it to be before uploading it to Acadex. So. Awesome, thank you. And then the next question. I noticed you had gone towards direct teacher model versus mm -hmm. BB. Could you walk me through kind of your, your thought process behind going directly to teachers going to academic institutions? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, educators don't wanna, again, don't, they don't wanna go through the administration of trying to figure out if this pl platform is already good enough. It is already good enough. Uh, we just need to make sure that it's easy for them to get on, right? And uh, when a school gets involved, it's often slow, it's often uh, messy, right? If a teacher comes straight to our platform, it's a lot easier for them to just sign up and go. And um, yeah, we do offer B2B, but uh, B2C is where we primarily want to be. Awesome. Wonderful job, wonderful job. Next up is Grace with QPS. 
All you. A fun fact that most people don't know about me is that I'm a twin. Could you come up here for a second? Now he's the best big brother ever by a whole minute. <laughs> oh, now that's my first reaction since I'm from Wisconsin. Second, someone call 911. Now please, no one actually call 911. He's fine. But can you guys grab QPS? Now on average, it takes nine minutes for EMS to respond to a call. That's nine minutes my brother has with zero privacy. But QPS will provide him that privacy. And not only will it provide him privacy, it'll prevent you from emotional trauma. Hi, my name is Grace Radlin, the founder of QPS, which is the solution to a lack of privacy during medical emergencies. Thanks. So you may be wondering, what is QPS? QPS stands for Quick Privacy Screen. It is a fast, portable screen that provides a person experiencing a medical emergency privacy. A few months ago, I witnessed a similar incident, except she wasn't acting. I felt horrible. She had dislocated her ankle. And this got me thinking, the NFL has those blue privacy tents on the sidelines. Why can't everyone have a basic right to privacy when they experience a medical emergency? And that's when QPS was born. So when you purchase QPS, it comes with a standard carrying bag. Within the bag, there are four three-foot poles, two six-foot red sheets, and two 10-foot black sheets. The different colors help differentiate the different sizes. I'll also have reoccurring revenue potential here as I'll sell individual sheets. Let's say your sheet gets dirty or you get a hole in it. You can simply purchase a new sheet and I'll customize the sheets for an additional charge just like my prototype here. My target market for this is high schools and gyms as these are the most likely places for a serious injury to occur. There are over 100,000 gyms and fitness clubs and over 26,000 high schools nationally. Every day, there are multiple gym classes and sporting events after school where a serious injury is likely to occur. For example, my brother's basketball friend came down with a rebound and dislocated his knee. It was awful. EMS was called and practice was canceled, but they didn't have QPS. With QPS, they could have provided him privacy and continued practice at the other end of the court. I'm gonna have a proactive marketing strategy where I'm gonna go to schools, I'm gonna go to gyms, and I'm gonna attend conferences to speak with those responsible for making the purchasing decisions. I'll still have an online presence with a website, but that won't be my primary focus. Now, I do have one competitor over in Europe who makes a huge 23-foot privacy screen. It's all interconnected, meaning the sheets and poles are permanently attached. So, you couldn't just set up a five-foot section. You have to set up the whole 23-foot structure. This also means if you get a hole in the sheet, you have to purchase a whole new product. And this is what makes QPS different. The poles and sheets aren't permanently attached. It's fast to set up, lightweight, and customizable. In the demonstration, it took under 30 seconds for two people to set up two poles and a sheet to create what I call a screen. Now there's different formations and that all depends on the situation at hand. For example, we could have had four poles and four sheets to provide complete privacy. Now, I've made a ton of progress with QPS, but there's still more to do. It started with the initial idea, and since then, I've been prototyping and playing around with different designs. Next, I'm gonna file for a provisional patent application and start reaching out to manufacturers because I want this made professionally in the US. Then, I'm gonna start selling to high schools and gyms. But this isn't just limited to high schools and gyms. Anywhere where a medical emergency can happen, QPS will be. Think about restaurants, factories, or even Lopes Way. Not that anyone would rather scooter down Lopes Way. <laughs> so next time you stumble and tumble and end up in trouble, just know QPS is there to provide you privacy. <laughs> and there's a QR code if you want to scan. It's just kind of a funny message in my contact information. That's awesome, great pitch. I think uh, 
you know, there's there's a lot of schools out there. There's a lot of public venues. You know, I've been in a public venue when someone fell down and had a seizure, and it is it's kind of an awkward situation. So I like the idea to be able to shield. Could you talk to me a little bit about you know the competition side and uh, you know you you mentioned you were looking at getting a provisional patent once you have your design, but as you apply for that, you know how are you going to protect your IP so that other people don't come in and try and mimic a similar concept? Yeah, so I'm going to try to be first to market with this and get this manufactured as soon as possible. I'm still seeking out mentorship and legal advice um, to how I can get this patented. Um, but the competitor over in Europe, I feel as though they're targeting the wrong market. They're actually targeting towards EMS. And that was my initial target market. I was going out to police stations and asking for input. But that doesn't solve the nine minute problem. And this does by targeting high schools and gyms. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So only question I ask is, you know, why would I buy this over just taking maybe two orange cones and setting up a sheet? Like, what is the difference between this and, and that? That's true, but that's a hassle. Like, can we just find an orange cone in this room? This would be set up, for example, like in the back. So as soon as an emergency happens, um, you just go grab it. It's all in one sleek bag. So the poles and sheets are already there. You don't have to go find a cone and go find a sheet. It's already all together, and you can customize it, so you can put a little logo on there. Uh, other question I have is, you know, generally when um, going forward with the patent process, you would not disclose anything about your product before getting a patent. So why, why disclose? this idea? That is a very good question. And I've been seeking different advice. I've had some people tell me, you need more feedback. You should file a patent. Don't tell anyone about this. Um, I'm just using this opportunity as a great way for public speaking. I want to get myself out there, hopefully make connections to manufacture this. Um, as far as my knowledge, I think I can patent this, but I'm not sure. And so I don't want to waste that time. If I can't get a patent, I just want to be ready to go with it. Um, so you mentioned you had a lot of conversations with like police officers, first responders, and you've arrived at gyms as kind of the first market you want to go after. Can you talk a little bit about some of the real world testing, if you've done any in that space? Like how many of these have you made? How many have been actually used um, or maybe plans to do that? Yeah, so this is my first prototype when I like, it was like a light bulb moment. I ran to Home Depot, just grabbed supplies from there. So this is the only one I've actually um, made. So it hasn't been in the real world yet, but I have been talking to like teachers, coaches, um, where this could be applicable. And what's the price right now to make one or estimated price to make one and what do you want to sell it for? This one cost me $80. I plan on selling it um, for $150. My competitor sells it for $295 Australian, which is about $200 US, and so that accounts for my price with the um, polyester sheet cool. and poles. Yeah, I think just make two or three more of those if you can and go sell them. Just try and sell them and see who can buy them and then Thank you. go from there. Thanks. All right. Beautiful. How can we get this off? Brother, you want to help? Get twin brother back. Uh, Caleb McCandless. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next up is Lucas with Powder Pal. It's all you, Lucas. <laughs> Give him a second, he's setting up over here. Who liked those first two pitches? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. 
Again, this is our third of five today. So uh, if you're here following someone, they'll be coming up here shortly. But next up is uh, Lucas here with Powder Pal. When he gets set up here. But. Go kill it. Okay, bust. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, nearly 50% of Americans use protein powder every single day and they all have the same problem. This is what I like to call the protein fumble. The protein fumble is when you go to scoop your protein from the container into the mixer, and as soon as you turn your wrist, boom, there goes nearly $2 worth of your precious muscle building nutrients all over your counter. This is the culprit of the protein fumble. Current protein powder scoops are not made to effectively transfer your powder from the container into the mixer. This flawed design can cost you as much as $2 per scoop. This would happen to me almost daily. I would come home from the gym exhausted after a workout. My arms would be shaking, and I'd try to scoop my protein powder from the container into the mixer. And guess where it ended up every single time? That's right, all over the counter. It got to a point that my own mother had banned me from making shakes in the house. Listen to this. Lucas! Oh, come on! Look at all this powder! All the powder dust all over! Stop! You have to do this every day? Can't you do it over the sink? Oh my gosh! All this powder dust all the time! I am so glad I never have to hear that again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've come up with an innovative, Patented device to prevent the protein fumble. My name is Lucas, and this is Powder Pal. Allow my trusty assistant, Ben, to demonstrate for you guys. Ben, come on out. Ben, show everybody your muscles. Let's see them. There we go. He doesn't spill his protein powder. Judges, in front of you are three glasses of water. Ben will now attempt to scoop the protein from the container into the mixer without fumbling. Watch as he effortlessly scoops the powder into Powder Pal and as he pulls the trigger to precisely release the powder into the water without fumbling. Attaboy, Ben. Nice and easy. Annual protein powder sales are approaching a whopping $19 billion, with nearly 2,000 brands on the marketplace today. Our B2B strategy will allow us to put Powder Pal in every single container. The protein fumble is such, such a problem that there is already competition. However, these brands are not focused on the B2B business strategy. Our strategy will allow us to put Powder Pal, oh, sorry. Powder Pal will be perfect for brands looking to differentiate themselves in the already large protein powder marketplace. We already have a deal with Bjorn Fit to include a Powder Pal with every client he signs. Yes, Powder Pal is great for protein powder, but it also works for baby formula too. For baby formula, we've created a B2C model where consumers can purchase Powder Pal directly online. You may have noticed that baby formula is now locked up behind counters due to high cost and high demand. It costs an average of $400 to $800 a month to exclusively formula feed just one baby. Talk about an expensive fumble. Now imagine you're holding your crying baby who hasn't been fed, right? And you go to scoop your formula from the container into an even smaller bottle than the mixer. And you spill it all over the counter. Now you're expensive, hard to get formula is wasted, and your baby is still hungry and crying. That's a huge problem. Our marketing strategy consists of using social media to connect with influ fit influencers in the fitness industry. Since a lot of fitness influencers already have their own protein powder brand, this will allow us to step our foot into the B2B marketplace and allow us to connect to our target market and, re and show off the capabilities of Powder Pal. For Baby Formula, to connect with mothers, we're going to advertise on Facebook mom groups and on YouTube channels for new mothers. We sent out a survey and received 60 responses. 
Out of these 60, 53 said that, that they would love to pre-order a powder pal, and only seven said they wouldn't. Judges, with the $2,500 I could potentially win today, $1,000 is gonna go into manufacturing, $1,000 is gonna go into getting a finished product, and 500 is gonna go into sending out those products and getting inventory. Yes, Powder Pal is great for protein, formula, protein powder and baby formula, but has a multitude of uses beyond that. Powder Pal is great for chocolate milk, laundry detergent, coffee, baking, spices, the list goes on and on. Your vote for Powder Pal ensures that Americans everywhere stop fumbling their protein. <laughs> Judges, any questions? Yeah, um, no questions for me, but honestly, I love this. I, I think this makes so much sense. It's, and when you have things that make sense and they're easy, they're easy to market. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars on marketing. Um, what I would say is why B2B? Why not take everything into your own hands and just start selling to individuals? I think this is perfect for, you know, flour, for example. Like, obviously powder, but flour is the number one thing that ends up all over the place. And I think if you just kind of put these on Amazon and, like, scale and sell, that you can do really well. So why B2B? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. So I'm, gonna, I'm planning on doing that, yes, but also... B2B will allow us to be in every single container and take a chunk of that $19 billion that protein powder companies are making now. So, yes, I want to sell on Amazon as well as be in protein powder containers. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, do you have any patents? Yep, we're provisional patent pending. Okay, awesome. Uh, kind of a devil's advocate question, but don't protein powder companies want you to spill your protein powder? Why would they? It's just inconvenient for the customer. So imagine you're a protein powder company, right? Like I said, the, they pull in $19 billion, right? And you're a protein powder company that's just starting out or you're small and you're looking to differentiate yourselves from the market, right? So why wouldn't you put my product in the protein, uh, in the protein bottle so that people have something different that they can love and enjoy? Yeah, I think it's cool. I think, I think this would be better just try and blow up on social media and just go straight to the consumer. Sure. Um, awesome. And then talk about your, you said you did some pre-orders. Yes, sir. Were those like committed pre-orders? Like you got, you took people's money for those? No, I didn't take people's money, but as soon as okay. I get a finished product, I'm going to reach out to all those people that did pre-order. Um, a lot of them I know personally. A lot of them I would, I sat outside the gym and took surveys and got people excited about it. But as soon as I get a finished product, I'm going to reach out to all those people and receive the money for it then. Okay. And how are you making them right now? Yep, so perfect question. Currently, I am making them with my buddy. He 3D prints them for me, but w like I said, once I get a finished product, which is gonna look like, uh, I'm gonna have to get them injection molded, right? So that costs a lot of money up front. So once I get a finished product, then I'm gonna get them through injection molding. Great, great pitch. Thank you. So I, um, I like B2B, I like B2C, done both, seeing the pros and cons of each. Um, that is interesting when there's 19 you know, billion dollars worth of protein powder sold, a lot of containers. Correct. With that, these companies are selling the scoops you know, inside of the container for, it probably costs them you know, maybe 10 to 20 cents a piece to manufacture. What's kind of your um, push on the B2B model? Do you, do you have any estimates on how economically you might be able to make these when you go to manufacture them? Yeah, great question. So. When we start injection molding, we can get the cost down to probably under 30 cents. That's what we're looking at right now. Obviously, once I get a finished product, I can start like getting quotes on it. And you know, right now it's hard for that. But once I get a finished product, I'm looking at under 30 cents trying to. That's awesome. That yeah, thank you so much. Probably could be obtainable too with yeah. a, a small, you know, with plastic. But uh, yeah, I think that's great. Um, you know, as far as the companies. They're going to look for something to differentiate inside of their powder, so I could see that going to market. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Appreciate your feedback. To, to, uh, to go ahead. Sorry, guys. One more question. One more question. <laughs> yeah. So to your point, I I do think just getting out and selling this on your own would would be better. Okay. Um, you know, the protein companies, they do want you to spill your protein because you're just going to buy more protein, right? But I think that makes for an easy marketing point for you to say, hey, why keep buying protein when you can buy this? And they're going to try to cut you on your pricing. You know, if they're, they're probably paying 
three cents for those scoops. So just something to think about. Thank you guys. I appreciate your feedback so much. Thank you. A standing round of applause there from his team there awesome so next up is rachel michael with truebine welcome to the stage right here yeah you guys are awesome. <laughs> got some energy got some energy in the room i love it i love it The church is the largest unconnected network in the world. Even within a 20 mile radius, most churches will never even speak to one another. And most church members will never even form a bond with the people sitting right next to them. Truevine wants to solve this. Truevine is, an is a social media platform like Facebook and Instagram, but we are built to connect the body of Christ in an online environment. The problem we are facing is isolation. This problem affects three different audiences in compounding ways. The first audience is the users. These individuals have become so isolated that they fear making the first in-person connection and struggle to maintain the relationships they do have. Second is the churches. And the core purposes of the church is to create and grow Christian community. But their members are not talking to each other, and the church staff is overwhelmed trying to get news of church events and needs to them. And lastly, the, the Christian businesses. They used to be able to rely on the Christian community to spread details about their product and service. However, now they're not talking, Christian businesses are forced to rely on secular advertising services. And these services do not recognize Christians as a marketable group which forces businesses to spend hundreds to thousands of extra dollars on wasted ad space. Now, Truvine wants to address this issue for the individuals by creating a place where human dignity is honored. These five promises will be the core of our promise to treat users like people and not as products. First, we want to cre create an environment where it is safe for all ages and is honoring of, the Christian, of our Christian foundation. What this means is we will not allow any explicit content, uh, substance abuse content, or any harmful, other harmful content on our platform. Next, we want to create a place where you know you're talking to a real person and not some fake online persona. And here, we believe that honoring human privacy is part of honoring human dignity. So we promise not to do any secret data tracking or third-party data selling. Lastly, we want to create a place where you can connect to your local community and form real, actual bonds and connections that will last a lifetime instead of just relationships that stay in the online world. Now, it is impossible to overstate how valuable it is to have a tool that is built specifically for your needs. For the churches, this is Truevine. Churches will no longer have to compete for relevance and they'll gain access to tools that allow them to create and spread details about events and programs to their members and volunteers all in one place. These details will be sent to the members through their preferred contact form, whether it be email, through text, or on the platform itself. And lastly, we want uh, Truvine is not just a top-down communication from church to the community. We want the community to be able to engage with each other and collaborate on community needs. I'm handing it over to my partner. All right, let's talk about revenue. Like all traditional social media platforms, Truevine is completely free to both the users and the churches. Instead, our revenue comes through paid advertisements, specifically for Christian businesses. We provide a place where they can target Christian audiences and build recognition and brand credibility with them as a Christian company. Now, when we say Christian company, there are two that we're talking about, two types. The first type is those which are openly Christian, but sell a product that is interesting to both general and Christian audiences. You can think about companies like Hobby Lobby, Chick-fil-A, and GCU. They don't need a Christian audience specifically, but the Christian audience is their most passionate, and they can reach them through us. Our primary audience 
is the Christian businesses which serve products that are specifically interesting to Christian groups. You can think of Christian apparel brands, Christian bookstores, Christian media companies, and Christian event centers. We allow one place where you can reach them and sell your product to the audience that cares. Looking about the addressable market, within the US, commonly small businesses will spend $6,800 per year on online marketing alone. There are estimated to be 10 million small Christian businesses within the US, which brings us to a total addressable market of $68 billion annually. Now, when I was starting to build this product last year, I went out and did market validation, talking to churches, users, and businesses to gauge for interest, and I received great enthusiasm back. I was very excited to build this product right away, but I didn't have the capital to hire a coding company to build it for me, so I learned to code which bring, and built Truevine myself, which brings us to this point. Um, we are currently working on uploading the app to Android and, Andro uh, Android and iOS to launch an beta test form August 1st, 2024. We'll use the data during that time to use as market validation and launch in full by August 1st, 2025. This is what it's looking like on desktop and iOS right now. But let's talk for a moment about why we're doing this. When internet culture first became a thing, we all quickly noticed how toxic and destructive it was to us and to our communities, but we thought that would stay on the internet. It didn't. Online culture has affected the way that we speak even with people right in front of us and the way we interact. Truvine presents an opportunity for us to create a space where Christian culture is leading the culture and take a step towards healing the culture we live in. We hope you will join us in creating this vision. Thank you for your time. Great pitch, thank you guys. I thought it was uh, really unique. In my church, it'd be great if I had some app that I could go to and know what they have going on all the time. It's, it's a little hard to navigate websites these days, um, especially depending on what church you go to. Talk to me a little bit about, as you guys, it sounds like you want to connect the local church. How are you guys going to navigate the different denominations? Um, because there are some, some fundamental differences across a lot of different churches. Yeah, so we as a platform, do not take any denominational stance ourselves. We want to be a tool that is open to the entire Christian body, so we're taking just the basic stance of what is the gospel, that's what you need to agree on to be a church, and then from there it's a tool that they can use to reach their own members and their members can use to communicate with one another. So we have both a work through the church approach where we would get a church who wants to partner with us and get them onboarded, or we can just work grassroots through the community and get people who are interested in joining the platform and communicating whether their church wants to be a part of it or not so that community isn't stuck between denominational divides. So really quick, it, this is built for singular churches, a platform, or is it like sort of like an Instagram for churches where you can kind of see all the different churches around the valley? Yeah, that... so you know how on Facebook you can see a business's page, right? It's built for businesses to be able to interact with the other people. So we've built this with, in mind with the churches that Every member, every client coming on the site likely has a church that they want to hear from and want to be able to interact with on a regular basis. So they can subscribe as a member of that church. That church will then always be prioritized at the top of their feed, but their own community exists together with them, whether they're the same church or not. It's that local area of Christian body that interacts with one another. So they can also see what's going on with other churches in the area, but their own church is prioritized. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Um. Can you talk a little bit about the revenue model? You mentioned yeah. advertising as kind of the core way to you know, generate revenue. But on social media you know, platforms, advertisers won't advertise unless there's already a substantial number of people there, mm -hmm. which means there's going to be a cash flow problem and you have to find a way to get money. Yeah. Um, maybe just talk a little bit, a little bit about short-term yeah. um, tactics. I would love that. to. So that's what's going on in the, let's see if I can go back one slide, I can't, in the uh, beta test period. So during that time, we have a couple businesses that have already agreed to sponsor our one-time costs and help us during that trial period so that we have a um, proof of concept. Now, Truvine's unique in its local spacing, so we don't need quite as big of an audience to get started with businesses who want to advertise with us. Like, a thousand users across the country advertise with them, so what, maybe they'll go to your business. A thousand users in your own hometown, 20 miles or less from your business, 
that's a good place to advertise. Yeah, cool. And one more quick one. Um, mm -hmm. Like, so first off, congrats on making the app yourself. That's the way to do it. You don't wait around and <laughs> find some money. Uh, can you just clarify a little bit, like, whose problem is this solving? Is this solving the church's problem or is it solving the individual's problem? Thank you. That was the most challenging part of our pitch to work out because we're solving three problems. We're solving the problem of individuals who want community. We're solving the problem of the church who wants individuals to have community and wants to be able to reach that community. And we're solving the issue of the Christian businesses who want to be able to reach the Christian community with their projects. The challenge was that Christian's community has gotten more and more separated, so the church and the businesses who have been able to rely on that community can't. So we're, caught, we're targeting the root of the issue of separation between people and supplementing where there's difficulties with the church reaching all of their members and with businesses being able to reach Christians. Good job, y'all. Next up is, and last, actually, Mackenzie with Signature Tote. Sorry. It's all you. <laughs> After this uh, presentation you guys have here, you'll also see a quick fashion show as the judges go out there and they pick their finalists and then we'll deliver the money. So it'll be a cool uh, next few 15, 20 minutes. Awesome. This is what Beyonce must feel like. <laughs> hey, QR codes. <laughs> I can talk about that too if you guys want. <laughs> Kidding. Okay, let's talk about a serious problem now. Grocery store. No. <laughs> Not at all. That was wonderful. All of you guys. Glad we could clear the air. <laughs> Not at all what I meant. Okay. Grocery stores are spending $4 billion each year to kill our environment. There is an old and outdated industry worth $4 billion. And that industry is the plastic bag industry. Each year, each individual uses over 700 plastic bags each year. And this adds up to over 5 trillion plastic bags used worldwide. And these plastic bags end up in landfills, oceans, and even ourselves. In a study conducted by Environmental International, researchers found plastic in the blood of 77% of participants. So not only are these plastic bags harming our environment, but they're also harming ourselves. The problem has become so bad that grocery stores have begun charging their customers for plastic bags. Some states have even started banning plastic bags altogether. Apart from that, consumers don't want to spend money on plastic or even reusable bags after just having to spend money on groceries themselves. Plastic is the enemy. So imagine if there was an eco-friendly and innovative solution that was free. That'd be crazy. <laughs> My name is Mackenzie Luray, and my solution to this $4 billion problem is Signature Tote Co. And we have created an eco-friendly solution that is durable, reusable, and lasts a lifetime. Signature Tote Co. is bringing a reusable grocery bag to the market for free. And what makes our signature totes so valuable to both grocers and consumers is the utilization of our embedded NFC technology. With just, with just the simple tap of your phone to our signature tote bag, customers are taken to an ever-changing array of weekly incentives, including discounts, promotions, 
and loyalty programs. Whatever a grocery store would like to offer their customers just by the simple tap of their phone to our signature tote bag. <laughs> Consumers will never forget their signature tote. So our main competitor is a company called Good Bag, and they're offering an NFC incorporated reusable grocery bag for a cost of $16 per bag. So I don't know about you guys, but I think that's quite a lot of money for just one bag. Apart from that, with their NFC chip, you are limited to two options. You have the choice to either one, plant a tree, or two, remove plastic from the ocean. So they're more focused on the environmental aspect of things, which is so good. But there's so much more value potential out there. They also currently operate as a B2C company, meaning they are bringing their grocery bags directly to consumers. Signature Tote has taken a bit of a different approach. We currently operate, operate as a B2B business, meaning we are bringing our Signature Tote bags directly to businesses for free. And this grants them the opportunity to incentivize their customers with our NFC technology. It's a simple and easy revenue model. First, businesses pay to utilize our NFC technology, which then grants them the incentives and the power to promote incentives, whatever they would like their consumers to see, just by simply tapping our bag. And with each tap of a consumer's phone to our bag, businesses pay a small 10 cent fee. There's an array of benefits to our signature tote, including first, customers. It helps alleviate that stress of having to pay for those plastic and reusable bags. And it ends the hassle of coupon clipping, scrolling through websites, or even promotional emails trying to find the next deal. For grocery stores, we cut into that $4 billion problem that they're causing, that they're having to spend on their plastic bags. And customers can shop with a peace of mind that knowing that their grocery store is working to help our environment. And finally, for the environmental aspect of things, we're helping eliminate this plastic waste in the environment. And with these incentives, it'll incentivize consumers to keep bringing back their signature tote bags to grocery stores, which will result in, result in returning customers and even new ones. So your vote for signature tote can help us create a totally new model that eliminates plastic waste and creates a new sense of loyalty between brands, grocery stores, and consumers. Help us save this world one signature tote bag at a time. Thank you guys. Yeah, it looks wonderful. And give it up for my beautiful helpers. One more round of applause. Thank you guys. This is also my brother. Get off. So a couple questions. Um, I'm familiar with the tote market. Um, how, many, how many pounds does your tote hold? Um, so it just depends on the size. These ones can hold up like 15, 20 pounds. Um, and our goal is to have different sizes for different items, which you want to buy. OK. Um, currently, are you selling any of these anywhere? We are not. Um, but actually, we. Uh, are planning on meeting with Sprouts in the next few weeks and currently have a company interested back in my hometown, which is back in Montana, called Winston Publishing. Um, and actually, as we speak, um, my signature tote company is being pitched at a company called Gensler in Phoenix, which is actually the world's largest architectural firm. Shows how much I care about you guys. <laughs> But uh, so we're hoping to get this out to market soon. And, sorry, what sets you apart from your competition other than not focusing on um, the environment, which I would think, you know, most people would. But what 
else makes you better than your competition? Yes. So our grocery bags are offered to businesses for free, and then they will be able to give them to their customers for free. So what they are paying for is not the bags themselves, but the NFC technology within their bags. So they have, they have the pay per tap fee, and then as you saw on the landing page, they pay for spaces on that page. So the bags, the revenue generated from that allows us to give our bags for free, which then they can give to consumers for free. Um, so a person who, like the end person who gets this, they just go to their local grocery store and they just pick one up and they have it forever? So. In order to get one, you would first have to buy groceries, and then they would just be in place of plastic bags. Okay. So you would buy your groceries, and then you'd get a bag. And the incentive is to bring your bag back, because that is where, when you get coupons and rewards and anything a grocery store wants to offer. So you have to remember to bring the bag back to get those rewards. OK. Can I go grocery shopping other places with the bag? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, any business can advertise. But it's locked in to my home grocery store? Like, no. Whatever, for the with, discounts? With the NFC technology, that's a great question, by the way. With the NFC technology, any business is able to advertise and be put in the chip. Mm. So they, and then they will be granted the option to either, one, have us change what they'd like people to see, or they'll have access to change themselves, whatever they would like to see. But as many businesses as they want can advertise within the chip, and they can pay a higher fee to be first on the page. Like, say there's a deal of the week they want consumers to see. They can pay extra and top dollar to be the first ones they see. So if I go back. So this landing page, so on top could be like deal of the week, whatever item you would like to see. And it's not just limited to grocery stores. So you can have, I mean, in there we have a realtor right now. And this is actually what pulls up if you tap your phone to that chip. Yeah. Um, it pulls up to this page. Like realtors can be in there if they want their top listings to be seen. They, it's an advertise. It's basically just an advertisement. Okay. And then last question. Um, have you contemplated or considered doing like an app, or like a membership, like my tote membership, and you just, as long as you're a member, we'll send you a, a tote bag, and then we'll just give you a list of all the local deals of, from every grocery store, so that way it's not really connected to an NFC, it's just in the app. No, I actually, right now, have just been focused on the NFC technology, but that's a wonderful idea, actually, just having it as a little monthly fee. Well, hey, I, I got to start off by saying my wife is a huge tote slash bag connoisseur. <laughs> and that's why I'm going to bring up this question. So she'll get a bag and then we'll use it for all our vacations, like she'll, you know, or wherever we're going. And so per your model, which I think is, is really neat to use the advertising revenue, right? It's different than social media. You know, it's, it's hard to geolocate. All of a sudden you can geolocate the ads, mm -hmm. um, which is great. You know, have you looked at the costing model, you know, because if I think about it, if you're offering the bags for free, right, um, you know, what will prevent people from just taking a bunch of free bags? Is there kind of like a... Yeah, <laughs> no, that's a great question. People can have as many bags as they want. Um, that, I mean, the more the better, because the more bags they have, the more they tap, and the more money we get. So uh, I actually have a pricing model, so per bag, right now it costs about 25 cents and uh, for each chip about 24 cents and then shipping costs and so main goal would be to start out would be to have 20,000 bags so that would be ten thousand dollars or so so about 50 cents per bag but yes we would love if you would take as many bags as you want so then your break even would be about if you're 10 cents a tap that's you know about five five taps and you're you're there. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Thank you, guys. So, if you haven't just seen already, GCU has the strongest entrepreneur ecosystem in the country. Give a round of applause for that. Thank you. So we're now going to send the judges back with Jack. We're going to walk back that way.
They're going to pick the final three. We're going to hear from Caleb here and some fashion individuals that are representing the club and some of our marketplaces. But again, what you just saw was five of over 200 businesses that we've had in Idea Club and our marketplaces helping them through their uh, product development or business development. One of our most successful stories, Kayla McCandless. Welcome to the stage. Oh, I'm sorry, one second. Sorry, I don't mean to cut him off. One more thing. We will be the people's choice. So as he's speaking and as the fashion show is going on, right before we start, it's really important that you guys get your votes in. It's an extra $1,000 to the individual that you thought did the best today. Awesome. In hard cash. Yeah, we got cash sitting right up here. So they're, uh, yeah, they're going to walk out with some money today. We're so, super thankful. Now, floor is yours. Hello, everyone. My name is Kayla McCandless. Uh, I'm the Vice President of Product Development here at IDEA GCU. Um, a year ago today, I was standing on this exact same stage as all of our contestants. And with that, I started my company, CarChap. To date, we have turned into a six-figure company, and we have produced hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of revenue. So this just shows you one example of the many businesses and what they can exactly turn into just from standing on this stage. With that, a lot of my credit goes towards this team, Connor, who has deeply motivated me and inspired me, as well as all of the members of the team and just the community that we're able to bring around us. My goal this year was to bring an engineering perspective into the Idea Club. With that, I have helped people with product development in order to take their ideas and turn them into a physical reality. Lots of you guys saw Lucas's great powder pal, and that's just one example of the countless of businesses that we help start turn it from an idea to an actual physical product. With that, one of the most unique ways for people to show their design and creativity is in the form of fashion. With that, I'm proud to introduce a glimpse of four of our unique student businesses out of our 180 companies that are currently involved with Idea GCU. I would like to welcome Kate with Anomaly Co. to the stage. Thank you so much, Idea Club, for this opportunity and all the support and um, yeah, just encouragement you've given me. I wouldn't be here without you guys, so thank you. In Luke 10, 2, Jesus says, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly that the Lord would send laborers into his harvest. 3.2 billion people within the 1040 window live in complete and utter spiritual darkness without knowing it. They were created to live in the light of Jesus, yet they cannot know that light unless someone brings it to them. 3.2 billion people is a pretty plentiful harvest. Yet despite that, only 3% of missionaries work amongst those most unreached, and less than 2% of missions funding worldwide goes to the 1040 window. The laborers truly are few. The 1040 window is a geographical region including North Africa, the Middle East, and Southeast Asia, and it has extremely little to no access to the gospel due to political, social, and economic suppression. See, at Anomaly Co., we believe John 8, 12, which says that Jesus is the light of the world and that whoever follows him will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life. We are a handcrafted Christian clothing brand with a mission to encourage and equip Christians to be the light of the world. Jesus yearns to lavish his light on those living in spiritual darkness, which is why we created Collection 2, Harvest. These pieces are designed to raise awareness for missions in the 1040 window, encourage prayer for gospel workers, and financially support a church planter in North Africa who happens to be one of my closest friends. We will donate 50% of our profit from this collection to help fund this church planter as they venture into one of the spiritually darkest and most hostile environments in the world where there currently exists zero church plants. Each one of these pieces behind me is designed and created by hand in-house, not outsourced. We believe in slow fashion and craftsmanship, which is why we use vintage and responsibly sourced materials base garments and upcycled fabric to create applique patchwork and craftsman um, techniques such as sewing, 
applique, embroidery, and hand-carved stamps to create all these designs you see by hand. If you would like to learn more about our mission as a company and for this collection, scan the QR codes behind me. I want you to join Anomaly Co. on our mission to be the light in the darkness because you are the light of the world. You are the anomaly. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce Jay from My Cross. <clears throat> Pick up your cross and wear it. Then he said to them, all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. That's Luke 9.23. Hi, my name is Jaden Greer. And I'm the brand owner, brand owner and creative director of My Cross Clothing. My Cross Clothing is a Christian streetwear brand that embodies the boldness of walking with Christ. It's not just about picking up your cross, but wearing it confidently. That's why the new slogan, pick up your cross and wear it. So my first piece I've ever made was the Luke 923 collection. The second piece I just dropped, the blood will atone. And this newest piece that's gonna be dropping in May, little cross hoodie. So each one of these pieces to me was about every single day making sure that I'm not just living out my faith by what I say, but also like what I'm wearing. And in that, I can present the gospel to others by hearing, oh, that's tough or that's fire. And I can tell you how good God is and how tough he is and how, how uh, he can save you from the fire. <laughs> um, so, but in reality, it's not just about cool clothes. It's not just about profits. It's bigger than me. That's why a portion of profits goes to missionaries. It's really been on my heart ever since I went to uh, Belize for a mission trip. So I'll wrap it up with this. God loves you. He sent his son to die for you. He loves you and forgives you. He wants a relationship with you. <laughs> and he's just waiting on you. So go with God and he'll go with you. My name is Jaden. This is my brand, My Cross Clothing. Stay blessed, stay fresh, and let God do the rest. And y'all can go scan the QR code. You'll see the Instagram, too. And next up, good fellowship. All right. It's my model, so if you guys want to start heading this way. Yes, that's me. All right. All right, my name is Andrew Bussman. I own Fellowship Fits. We are a Christian ministry focused on spreading the gospel through fellowship with friends, family, and the Father. <laughs> I didn't really prepare anything, but yeah. Um, <laughs> our main focus is to, spread, uh, again, spread the gospel through fellowship with friends, family, and the Father, and to encourage everyone to stay fitted for the Father with your fellow biblical bros, Yes. <laughs> and spiritual sisters. Yes. Love it. 
Yeah, one of the biggest things that we do here at Fellowship Fits is we partner with local ministries, uh, youth ministries, high school ministries, college ministries, and basically what we do is we speak at these events, encourage the youth, the youth, high school, and college ministries to spread the gospel with their friends, biblical bros, spiritual sisters. So, yeah, that's what we do. Next up is going to be Winston. Good evening. So I'm a co-brand owner of For the Good Company. We are a Christian clothing company. We are based off of Romans 8.28. All things work together for the good of those who love him. Well, we recently started um, back in October of 2023. Uh, we are partner with the 35th largest nonprofit based off the Forbes 100 large, largest nonprofits uh, list, Convoy of Hope. They focus on helping people that uh, are needing relief from natural disasters as well as orphan children. And so what we do is we donate a good majority of our profits towards them. We go to feed families and help them rebuild. For the Good is a Christian clothing company. Idea Club has helped us launch um, drastically. In the beginning, it was a space where you're able to get real life feedback from, the, from you uh, students at GCU at the Idea Marketplaces. It has now grown to a space where For the Good supporters can come and get our merchandise, whether online or in campus, on campus. Uh, we feel like the Lord has um, definitely blessed us with the help of Idea Club, with the connections that we've made through the clothing industry, and we look forward to growing and continuing the mission of the Lord's work as well as partnering with Convoy of Hope. Thank you very much. Good job. Good job. Awesome. Thank each and every one of y'all. You guys are great. Thank you guys. You guys can exit the stage. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Give a round of applause to these vendors. Good job, everyone. Yeah, the, again, what talented individuals. It's so cool to see every week new ideas, new businesses, new ambitions, new social media strategies. Many of these individuals have spoken in front of our class as a mentor, a mentor to many other students in the club. So we're so thankful to have them both to represent our entrepreneurial student body, but also help others through this wonderful, what is the best entrepreneurial ecosystem throughout any college in the country. To add to that, we've had some wonderful work this year, but I'm graduating. We're sending this off to an individual next year that's my right-hand man, my business partner, and someone I look up to both in faith and life in general. Jackson Godwin is our next president of Idea Club next year. How's it going, guys? So I know you guys want to hear the winners, but I'm going to get up here and yap for like five minutes, if that's all right. Um, so first off, I just want to thank everybody that made this possible. Tim, Robert, I don't know where Robert ended up. Oh, he's back there, okay. Uh, John Cadis, our new dean at the business school, and everybody that's helped out, as well as our amazing Idea Club leadership um, who have set up the transition to be super smooth. Um, I want to tell you guys a little bit about me. So I wasn't really planning on, oh, am I not? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I came to GCU um, off of a Discover trip, which is where I saw Jace from Wash the City win uh, the Canyon Challenge, this very event, uh, coming up on, what is it, three years ago, which is insane. Um, and I came to GCU, and at the time, when I was in high school, I did a mobile detailing side hustle. And so through the aid that Idea Club has given me and all the resources that GCU has given, um, they've not only proven themselves as the best entrepreneurship ecosystem in the entire world, but it's changed my life for the better. Um, I'm getting married this summer, um, so that... <laughs> Not super relevant, but uh, I bring that up because the side hustle that I came to college with through the help of Idea Club and Tim and Robert and everybody that has come alongside me, that is now my way of supporting my family. So when we say that we take ideas to reality and then you actually make money off of it, I'm a living example of that, and there's so many others in this room. You saw the list of vendors. Um, and so I'd also like to just thank Connor for everything he's done for me. Um, I always joke that I know everything or everything that I do and how I conduct myself professionally all comes from Connor. Um, cause he's just, he's great. You've heard him talk. He's awesome. Um, and so that being said, I will be the president of Idea Club next year. And so I, I thought it was fit that I would lay out some goals for next year. Um, and so there's a few little ones and a few big ones. I think, um, through everything that Connor's team has built out, um, and everything that the CCOB has helped us with, our student markets were a smash hit. I think we just passed $300,000, um, in sales directly to students' pockets. And that's all for you guys. Um, 
And so the goal with next year is to not only have more student markets, but have more vendors. So I'll talk more about these goals at the beginning of next year. Um, but our goal is to put as much money in student pockets as possible. And then me and, T and Robert and Tim have also talked about this goal of having the entire business school graduate debt free. Um, so that's something we're super passionate about. Um, and I, I do fully believe that it is possible with our student markets. Um, so more vendors, more money to student pockets, as well as just more fully developed businesses. And the biggest thing that I'm passionate about is the integration of faith into the marketplace. So we know, there it is. <laughs> um, at GCU, we believe that, and all throughout the world, we believe that the free market is the greatest force for problem solving and innovation. And we face this unique problem as Christian business owners that, as C.S. Lewis puts it, the market is occupied by the enemy. That's enemy-occupied territory. And so as Christians, we do believe that we are the light of the world and that we believe we are the only hope. Jesus is the only hope for this world. There's no other way. And so as Christian business owners, we are now approaching this, this situation in a world where we're outnumbered and our backs are against the wall. And as Robert Vera always says, no one's coming to save you. So we do believe that as Christians, it is our, our, our uh, calling and our responsibility to take care of the world around us. So something that I'm passionate about next year is how do we fully integrate faith into entrepreneurship to solve problems? And then the way that C.S. Lewis finishes that quote is he says that we're taking part in the great sabotage. So that is our goal as Christian business owners, is to go into this enemy-occupied territory of the free market, which we know is great, and sabotage it for Christ. That's our goal. Um, uh, that is why we're passionate about the next generation of Christian entrepreneurship. First Timothy 4.12 says it perfectly. Um, in the ESV, it says, let no one despise you for your youth, but set an example for the believers in faith, conduct, love, speech, and purity. I think I got that order right, hopefully. Um, and that is, that's the verse that we're going off of next year. That's what we're passionate about. And that is why, um, as a school GCU, um, and as a college, the CCOB, and as a Club Idea Club, is so invested in the next generation of entrepreneurship because we genuinely believe that we not only have the ability to change the world, but the responsibility to do it. Um, and now we're just waiting on judges. So, uh, what? Yeah. In about five minutes, the judges will be in here, and we'll get to the winners. So, yeah. Thanks for coming, guys. Excited for next year.
Hello, everybody. If you haven't yet, grab a seat. We're about to make uh, final announcements here, so everyone grab a seat. And uh, you're, you guys can sit with your groups as well if you'd like to. Okay. It's kind of emotional. It's really cool. So I'm really happy to be here with you guys today at my last Canyon Challenge. I'll push this over. All right. So I would like to invite all of Idea Club leadership to the stage. You guys are welcome. All of you guys. Chase, Michael, Allison, yeah, you guys too. Awesome. Robert, would you like to come on? Tim, would you like to come on as well? Oh, we have the, we can right now. Sir, would you like to give the judges their gifts? We're so thankful about Balance by Joe. Where is she at? There you go, right there. She helped put together these gifts of the granola. She makes another one of the thriving idea club student businesses in our marketplace. Thank you, Joe. Awesome. So Weston from Lux Manufacturing is actually going to be making this announcement. Judges, would you guys like to join us on stage as well? Awesome. All right. Well, I want to start off by saying to the entrepreneurs, what an amazing job. The judges, we went back there and we needed about another 30, 45 minutes to talk about your guys' business models because they were very thorough and you all have a lot of opportunity with your businesses. So um, I will read the places here shortly, but I want to continue to urge you guys uh, to grow your businesses. I think it's really unique to start with an idea and bring it to reality. So great job where you guys have started, great job where you guys are at, and excited to uh, start with the winners. So um, I'm gonna start with third place. Wait, before you do that, I just wanna thank Trinity Capital, our sponsor, they donated to Yeah, woo! Yeah. All right, in third place, we have QPS. All right. In second place, we have Acadex. Before we announce first place, we, <laughs> I know, I know, exactly. We're actually gonna be doing the people's choice, $1,000 cash I have in my hands right now. So, after all the votes, everything that's been going down with all you guys on your phones and when Caleb was talking, <laughs> but no, uh, the voting total finished out, Mackenzie with signature totes. <laughs> Great job. Awesome. Great job. Yep. First place is all yours. All right. So in first place, we had a business that we talked about that we could see going on the B2B route or the D2C, direct to consumer. And so I would like to welcome up Powder Pal for first place. <laughs> Everyone, thank you for coming here today, celebrating these wonderful entrepreneurs, both in the fashion show and the individual speaking here today. I have no doubt that Jack's going to take this club even further. I'm so excited to see what everyone does. 
please come back next year and support this wonderful group as we continue to grow Idea Club. Thank you, everyone, and have a great summer. If you're an ENT 446 Vera, if you're a student in ENT 446 Vera, can you come up to the stage, please? If you're a student in ENT 446 Vera, please come up to the stage.